Hi, I'm Drew and welcome to my channel, The So So Seamstress. Um, in this video, you will see the process of the making of this vintage uh, party dress with detachable skirt that I am wearing now. This is the second vintage dress that I've made for this channel. Um, if you'd like to see the first one, I will put a link in the description box below. Um, however, this is the first one that I have made using a completely vintage pattern that had not been altered for the modern sewist in any type of way. So it was a very interesting process to say the least. Um, I hope you decide to stick around and subscribe to this channel. Um, if not, please support this video by giving it a thumbs up. If you stay to the end of this video, you will see my thoughts and um, review on the pattern that I used. And yeah, with that said, we'll get into the video of the vintage 1952, I believe party dress that I am wearing with a detachable skirt. So the pattern I'm going to be using to make this dress is a reproduction of an original vintage pattern and it's from Lady Marlowe and I have yet to open it so I'm not even sure what the details are but I have the two fabrics out that I want to use. I'm going to be making the dress with the overskirt and so I have this plain white linen well like off-white linen for the dress and then this linen with the circle shape for the overskirt. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is open this pattern, take a look at the instructions and the notions and then I will be able to get started. So when I opened it up the first page in there was what's usually on the back of printed patterns. Or the patterns only came in one size. So in most uh, patterns, I'm usually I usually cut a size 12, but for this one it was an 18, and the linens that I have are not listed as suitable fabrics. But I'm gonna use it anyway. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm guessing. I'm not really sure how this neckline works or is gonna lay, but we're gonna give it a try and see what happens. So I got all the pattern pieces cut out and I ironed them as much as I could with a dry iron. From the notes on the pattern pieces, it doesn't look too complicated. I am worried a little bit about gathering on the bodice, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. I will say that this paper is really good quality. It's like a nice thick paper, but that made it prone to tearing and so then I had to tape it in some places and then I ironed over the tape on an accident. So my next steps is to get them laid out on the fabric. So my table's not big enough to cut it all out at once. So this is my first go around cutting out and I've got them all laid out. Looking over the instructions, the instructions are super vague. And I thought with Lady Marlowe's patterns, part of what she did was kind of update the instructions for well, a less experienced seamstress because back in the day, like everyone made their dresses. so. A lot of things didn't need to be explained, but used to pattern pieces that say cut one or cut on fold or cut two or whatever, and these just don't. But I'm still hoping I can kind of figure it out as I go, so we'll see what happens. I'm going to get these cut out and get the marks transferred over, and then I will do my second set, which will just be the other part of the skirt, the other part, the other piece to the bodice, and then the overskirt which I'm going to do on different fabric. So, moving along. So I have my pieces cut out and all the markings transferred. I have my darts. I traced those in with the ruler and some tailor's chalk. I have added the dots at the shoulders. This has something to do with the gathering I'm going to have to do. All the notches are cut in. I'm going to do the darts first and then I will stitch the back together. Those are the first two step steps that these very 
vague instructions give me and I'll get those done and then I'll try to decipher the rest. These instructions literally don't say anything. They There's something to do with some seam binding that we're going to need for the shoulders but it doesn't say how much or I don't know. So I'll just keep going and and see where it leads me. So here is my front bodice all stitched together. My darts are completed. And the next step is for me to gather from these points. I'm gonna do it by hand. These are the super vague instructions. Gather bodice front at shoulder on seam line and one eighth an inch above. So I guess that means I will do two rows of gathering because the instructions don't say how far to gather it down or what it should be. So once I get both sides done and get ready to attach it to the other part of the bodice, I will be able to see, or I'll be able to kind of play with it to see how much I need to gather it down or what needs to happen here. So definitely need to practice my running stitches, but overall, I think this is gonna get the job done. So I've gathered up the front bodice, now I'm going to stitch together the back bodice and then gather it up at the shoulders as well. And then I will be able to uh, stitch the bodice together. The instructions are coming along a little bit, a little bit better um, than I th originally thought. So I'm optimistic that this will come out well. As much as I'm apprehensive, I'm glad that I chose this for my next project because it's definitely uh, forcing me out of my comfort zone and it's going to force me to, to do some things I otherwise would not have done. So for that, I am grateful. And so I threaded needles to gather this. I just don't know where I put them. Oh no, did I not thread them? No, because here they are. So I'm going to... I'm going to thread my needles and do my gathering. And I'll be ready to get the bodice stitched together. So the next thing I'm supposed to do is the shoulder seams. And so I was a little bit worried about the gathers. I wasn't sure how much to gather or how that was all gonna work. But once I matched up the markings and the notches, I was able to just adjust the gathers to it laid smooth in there. So it was, I guess in so many ways it didn't really need to be explained as much as I thought it was because it, it really made sense once I got going with a pinning and adjusting. So I'm going to stitch these together and I think they look pretty uniform on both sides uh, but I'll see once I get it stitched together but I'm going to stitch I'm going to stitch these shoulder, shoulder seams and kind of smooth it and gather it a little bit more as I sew it on the machine. So I'm going to do that now. Update, here's what happened. I stitched it together the way I had I did it just a minute ago where I gathered it and then kind of just matched up the notches. It looked horrible, so I removed all of that work. I gathered it really down as far as I could on both sides and then I measured them to make sure that they were even and I stitched them that way and this came out way better. I still have to remove those gathering stitches, but I can tell already it looks way better than what I had done at first. And I can see how it's going to lay on the shoulder. So once I remove those gathering stitches that are in there and press that, it's going to look really good. So I'm very pleased that I took it apart and did it over. I can't say that I would have done that in the past. So I'm pleased that I did that. I should have shown you what it looked like before. It was, it was awful. They didn't match up. They weren't even. The gathers were, weren't uniform at all. 
and so now they are and I'm very pleased with it so I'm going to remove the gathering stitches and then I'm going to stitch up the side seams I know I have to leave it open on the left side for the zipper I'm going to stitch that all up and I think I'm making great progress I'm going to finish these seams tonight I'm in front of the TV I'm sure I won't do it on camera and it's something that I haven't done before but this fabric is fraying really bad already and there's no lining in this dress which I didn't notice until I was already well I didn't think about until I was cutting the pattern out and realized that I chose very light white linen for a dress with no lining so, uh, another bridge I will cross when I get to. Um, I'm not so much worried about the skirt because it has the overskirt that'll cover it, but I'm a little worried about this bodice being really sheer. So, we'll see. And that's just the Taylor's chalk still on there. But it looks way better. So, I'll get to pressing and removing the rest of those stitches and keep it moving. So once again, I find myself in a situation where they assume that I have more expertise than I really do. The instructions say to stitch facing together, matching up the notches. Kind of vague, but what I'm guessing it means is stitch the front together at center front and then stitch and since this says shoulder one will be on each shoulder and then attach one of each of these to the back giving me one long piece and so that's what I'm gonna do and hope that that is correct and just keep moving along I have the bodice on my dress form, I'm getting ready to attach the facings. Um, I think it looks pretty good. This neckline is going to hang down like that. This is where the shoulders are gathered. And some kind of way, the shoulder stays going here. We'll see what happens, but I think so far so good. I put this on myself. It fits fairly well. And so I'm just going to take this off of here and then attach those facings and then I'll move on to the sleeves. So here is the facing. This is center front. I put the two sides on. I pressed it down and then the next instruction was to turn the bottom edge up one fourth of an inch and stitch down. So I did that and pressed it. And so now the next step will be to um, attach it to the bodice. This is the illustration. I'm not that sure what it means. I know my bottom, my folded edge goes at the bottom and I stitch it around the top and then trim, I'm guessing is the seam allowance, turn and press, leave loose until later. So now I have it pinned in place and once again, I think I'm kind of psyching myself out before I even get started because once I pinned everything in place, it really made sense. There's my center seam, and I'm pretty sure I was supposed to stitch this into a complete circle, but I didn't, so I have this pinned where I'm going to close this in the back, and I'm going to stitch that all around there using the same seam allowance. I'm going to press it, and I'm not too sure what they mean about leave loose for now, but think it's coming out pretty good and the instructions are not as bad as I keep making them out to be so I did it right just on the wrong side so I'm gonna take that off and try again so here's the bodice I took off the facing that I had put on the wrong side and reattached it I trimmed the seam allowance um, with pinking shears and then I pressed it down and so now what I'm guessing they mean by leave loose is don't top stitch it for right now. There's something we have to do to make the neckline hang the way it's supposed to. So I think this is looking 
really good. It's hard to see it up against the table. It's white. But I think it looks really good. It's time to start working on the sleeves. I have those cut out and pinned. So I'm going to stitch those. And then we have to do something with the shoulder stays. So I've been working on a few things. It, it didn't say what size zipper I would need, so I measured the opening and then I shortened the zipper that I had, which is something I hadn't done before, so hopefully that works out well. I have one of the sleeves gathered, which I did by uh, making three rows of gathering stitches, one directly on the seam and then one on each side of that. And I'm working on, I have them in, over here now so I'm working on gathering this up and then the internet is kind of telling me that the stay tape or the shoulder stays they had me cut out um, that they gave me a pattern for weren't supposed to be fabric at all they're supposed to be ribbon and somehow I'm supposed to hand sew it in here to secure the gathers in this in this seam and so I'm gonna do that some kind of way. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna show it, show it because I don't know how good it's gonna look. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm working on. And then I'm gonna kind of clean this up a little bit. I still have Taylor's chalk here. And so I'm guessing like just like a wet rag will take that out. I think it's kind of long well. The sleeve looks good. So I just have to sew that ribbon in there and then hem it and do the same thing for this side the gathering wasn't too hard there's markings there but I don't know if I used them as I should have I um I'm just gonna do like I did for the skirt which was just measure them on both sides to make sure it's even that they're the same length on both sides Oh, one of my threads broke. I don't know if that's like a game changer. If I should add another one or if it has to be three. I don't know. We're just going to go for it at this point. It's looking basically the same as the other side. So, so this one isn't going as well as the first one did. I'm still stuck. If anybody has any tips for gathering please feel free to leave them in the comment box below okay. I don't know how to make it happen and it looks horrible like this side looked good I don't know what's happening here oh yeah I feel something happening that did. Ugh. But what do I do when the thread breaks like do I have to take this out and start all over So I finally got the gathers done on both of the sleeves and I just need to hem the bottom and then sew that ribbon in there to reinforce the seams and just kind of clean this up. It looks terrible inside of there and honestly I can say I'm a little bit discouraged because I don't like the way the gathers look. Maybe I'll like the way they look once I... Um, do the neckline or have it on or whatever but I really I really don't like it <laughs> which is sad because I mean clearly the pattern showed that that's what this was maybe it was my fabric choice that it should have been something a little drapier Clearly the pattern shows the gathers on the shoulders and I don't know and I've come too far to turn back now so I'm just going to finish it. 
So here are the skirt back pieces. I have pinned the darts in place. I'll do the darts first and press it and then stitch the center back. So I sewed some gathering stitches along the side like they told me to and I, um, I tightened it to the point where the notches matched up so that was easy enough and made sense. And so the other side I have to leave open for the zipper so I have yet to work out how that's going to work with the gathering. So, um, yeah, with the other side, I just, I just pulled this until it was drawn up enough to where the notches matched. So for this side, I'm not sure what I do when I leave this open for the zipper, so I'm going to figure that out and then I'll come back. Okay, so this is where I am at with it. I've got the skirt sewn together. Um, I left the side open. The bodice is sewn together. I need to get uh, the zipper put in and then I'll get this ribbon put around the waist that I've sewn hook and eyes to. And I believe this just like cinches the waist in even more and kind of gives it that that pulled in shape around the waist. And so... I've made a lot of progress. I'm going to get the bodice attached to the skirt, get the zipper put in, and get the waist tape or waist stay or whatever this is called put in. I'm not sure. So, doing that now. So, I got the zipper put into the dress, um, and the dress is finished. It's hanging now, waiting on a hem. And so now I'm going to start working over on the overskirt. So I have my darts pinned. I'm going to sew in my darts. And then I'm going to stitch it together at center back. And then I'm going to hem the inside of the opening. And so once I do all of that, then I will be able to attach it to the belt. Hang it. Um, hang it so I can then hem the bottom. And this dress is really almost finished. I did a, a fitting off camera with the dress and it fits really well. I'm very pleased with it and so I am crossing the finish line at this point. So I've completed all those steps on the overskirt. The only thing left to do now is to hem it and to attach this belt. So once again I'm dealing with really vague instructions so I'm just going to do the best I can with the knowledge that I have and so what I'm going to do is it didn't say if I was supposed to cut one or two or if it did I'm not sure of what it said but I'm going to cut two and stitch them together on center and back because that makes it um, one just wasn't wide enough or what one wasn't long enough for me so I'm going to stitch those together at center back and then fold it over and press it um, leaving open between I think uh, between these points or it might be between these points between some points I need to leave it leave it open so that way I can flip it to the right side I'm gonna try and decipher what the instructions are saying but I'm just gonna get it attached to the waist the best that I know how so like I said stitching the two pieces together at center back folding it over and pressing leaving it open between I guess I'm gonna use the circle and the square and then getting it attached so I'm gonna see how that goes and then I'll come back this dress is almost complete I will say I haven't this this has been a pretty good learning experience for me, but due to the fact that I wasn't really happy with the design of the dress, so I should have definitely paid more attention to the line art and the instructions being so vague in places, or I don't know, maybe just myself lacking the confidence that it takes to get this completed hasn't been the best experience for me, but it's been an experience, so I won't complain. I'm just going to get it completed. And so now I have the belt that I stitched and then trimmed, turned, and pressed, except for the opening right here. 
um, I have it pinned to the waist of the overskirt and I'm going to stitch this in place and then um, turn this over and slip stitch uh, the opening together and then there will be nothing left to do but to hem hem the overskirt and hem the dress and it will be done. So if you're still here and you stuck around through all of that, you got to see the process of making this dress and how it did not always go according to plan. So um, my thoughts on the pattern from Lady Marlowe. I will say that I assumed or I thought maybe I read somewhere that the Lady Marlowe patterns that she didn't just reproduce them, but she also um, kind of updated the instructions a bit because in the 50s when this pattern was made, the girl who is sewing this dress kind of knew what she was doing. As I said before, this is just the second dress that I have made. So that into account, I am very pleased with how it turned out just for the fact that it is a wearable garment that zips and, you know, um, I could wear out in public. Um, moving forward, I would probably always read the instructions thoroughly first. If you did not notice, as I was making this dress, I was literally just taking it one step at a time because that's kind of how my brain works to process things. But I think if I had it more thoroughly read through the instructions before I got started, I would have had a better understanding. I think I would take the line art into account more. I kind of just look at a pattern and decide if I like it or not, and not so much as if I could really make it. Um, I like the way these ruching details on the sleeves and the cow neck looked on the pattern, but not so much on me. So I think I will take into account more of what it is that I'm actually making, not just do I think that the cover of the pattern looks pretty, because in this case I do, but I don't necessarily... Um, like these details. Why I think I like them more now, I'll say I didn't necessarily like constructing these details. I also think I would have chose different fabric. Fabric is linen and it was not one of the suggested materials and maybe that's because it doesn't want to um, gather and drape the way that this pattern calls for. So that is another thing I will also pay attention to. Um, line art and details of the garment as well as the fabric that I choose. This is linen. I really just like linen a lot, but um, maybe it just wasn't meant to do the things that this pattern um, calls for. So with that said, I'm excited for the next video. Um, I look forward to growing in my skills and growing this channel. So I hope you decide to stick around. Uh, please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more of my vintage makes that are sure and soon to come.